Hello friend, welcome to the course multivariate procedure with R. So up to now you can see uh, we have considered different aspects of uh, multiple linear regression model. And one of the basic assumption which we took was that y was measured on a continuous scale. That means y is a continuous random variable. The same was true uh, for x1, x2, xk, they can be discrete, they can be continuous. But for y, we had made that y was following a normal distribution. So, it is a continuous random variable. Now, in uh, practice, there are many situations where the outcome is only binary. That means, there will be only two outcomes, whether this will happen or this will happen. But the outcome depends on several factors. For example, if I say the example of uh, there is a bank who wants to take a decision where whether a credit card is to be issued to any customer or not. Now, if the bank wants to take a decision on the credit card, then the there are different variables which are going to influence the decision. For example, the salary of the customer. What uh, was the past? Means in the past, if the customer has any uh, loan, the customer has repaid it in time or not. Because in credit card, what is happening? You are trying to first uh, spend and then you have to pay it back after a month or so. And in case if the customer does not have a sufficient salary, then possibly the customer will spend from the credit card, but then there is a risk that uh, person may or may not be able to, uh, to pay it and then the bank will be at loss. So, when the bank is trying to take the decision, it tries to consider different factors salary, what was the past, uh, and what is the age, etc., etc. But the final decision is only one, whether the credit card has to be issued or not. So, your response variable will take only two possible values, and they can be indicated by say 0 or 1. For example, y equal to 1 means yes, credit card can be given and y equal to 0 means credit card can not be given. So, this is a binary. There is no value between 0 and 1. In, in such a case, if the y value takes value 0 0.7, it has no meaning. So, the next question is how to do the regression modeling when our response variable is binary in nature. And response variable is depending on say more than uh, two or say several independent uh, variable or several explanatory variable. So, in simple words, whatever multivariate or say multiple linear regression model we have considered y equal to x beta plus epsilon. Now, there is a constraint that the values in the y vector they takes only two possible values 0 or 1. So, now in such a situation how to do the regression modeling? This is the topic which we are going to discuss in this lecture. So, this can be achieved by logistic regression. So, let us try to understand about the logistic regression, its basic concept and how to implement it in the R software in this lecture. So, let us begin our lecture. Okay, so, now we are going to talk about the logistic regression model in this lecture. So, in the linear regression model y equal to x beta plus epsilon, there are two types of variable. One are uh, this uh, k independent variable or k explanatory variable x1, x2, xk and there is a steady variable which is indicated by here y. And these variables can be measured on a continuous scale as well as uh, like as a dichotomous variable or an indicator variable where they are trying to indicate a category only. For example, if I say a variable gender, gender takes value 1, if the person is male, it takes value 0 or it takes uh, um, that when the person is female or and so on, right. So, if the person has got uh, say this uh, uh, good marks, average marks, bad marks, then they can be indicated by the category 1, 2, 3. 
right so when the explanatory variables are qualitative then their values are expressed as indicator variable and then we try to use the dummy variables model although we are not uh, handling here the the concept of a dummy variable model in this course but uh, these are uh, well established model and available in most of the books on regression analysis and econometrics on the other hand when the study variable is qualitative in nature then its value can be expressed using an indicator variable which takes only two possible values 0 and 1 and in such a case the logistic regression modeling is used for example this y can denote uh, these values for example this success or failure success can be denoted by 1 failure can be denoted by 0 or vice versa also uh, the answers uh, yes or no like or dislike which can be uh, uh, be denoted by two values 0 and 1 yeah there is no necessity that okay yes will always be taking value 1 and no will be taking value 0 they can interchange also right so now you can just try to understand how we can do it in the case of multiple linear regression model and how are we going to handle such a situation when my y is uh, y is taking dichotomous variable 0 and 1 so we are trying to consider here the model this is the same model which we have considered y equal to x beta plus epsilon but now i am trying to write it it in the form of yi so that i can uh, explain you in a better way right so this can be written here here as a xi transpose beta plus epsilon i where xi transpose is the means here ith row x containing observation xi1 xi2 xik on each of the k explanatory variables Right, and beta is a, uh, a cross one vector having the component beta 1, beta 2, beta k without any problem. Usually, if I try to take the first uh, uh, variable xi 1 equal to 1, this will indicate the which correspond to the intercept it term in the model. The steady variable now takes two values 0 or 1, that is yi is equal to 0 or yi equal to 1 for all i goes from 1 to n. Now, we know from statistics knowledge that when yi is taking such binary variables then it will not follow normal distribution but it will follow a Bernoulli distribution with parameter pi. So its probability mass function can be indicated or can be written as yi takes value 1 with probability say pi it takes value 0 with probability 1 minus pi which is sometime you will see it is written as qi also in many books. So that is what you have to now keep in mind probability that yi equal to 1 is pi and probability yi equal to 0 is 1 minus pi right. Now we will assume here that expected value of epsilon i is 0. So now under this case if you try to find out the expected value of yi this is xi transpose beta which is equal to here probability of yi equal to 1 it is which is here pi right so you can see here now because this is the probability and expected value of yi is the mean value or the average value of yi so now there is a constraint that the average value is lying between 0 and 1 and if you try to recall your general setup of multiple linear regression model there was no such constraint the average value can lie between minus infinity and plus infinity and in this case the variance of uh, yi it is the variance of a Bernoulli distribution which is given as a p into 1 minus p so this will become here expected value of yi into 1 minus expected value of yi which I am trying to indicate by the quantity sigma square yi. Now if you try to recall earlier in the case of multiple linear regression model your variance sigma square was not dependent on the observation. We have not used the symbol about like sigma i square but in this case the ith observation has got a variance sigma square y i and which is changing from one observation to another observation. So now the question is how to model it. So when y is a dichotomous variable that means it takes only two possible values then the empirical evidence suggests that uh, this expected value of y on the whole real line can be mapped to 0 on 1 
and through a non-linear shape which is called as a shape like as this one you can see here we had a different color pen like as here this is between 0 and here 1 and this is here x and this curve is going turn like here this or it is here like this right so this type of a shape curve can uh, indicate uh, such a process where y is dichotomous variable right so now in case if you try to um, say this compare the two cases of multiple linear regression model and logistic regression then suppose my y is dichotomous then in that case all the data will be concentrated at two places here where the probability of y equal to 1 is 0 and here which is here on the y axis and here where the y probability of y equal to 1 is 1 because it takes only two values there is no data between uh, 0 and 1 now there are several constraints that you are simply fitting here one line like this do you think that is it uh, a good decision certainly not number one number two the you are trying to take here these values but the range of y can exceed the 0 and 1 range also right so this is not good enough for us so now we try to look at the logistic regression where y lies within the range of 0 to, to 1 and the two sets of data are lying here on the two extremes and we are trying to fit here a s curve like so this is the uh, lo logic behind this logistic regression so now if you try to uh, understand all this uh, process from the statistics point of view then we are trying to find out here probability of y equal to 1 for given x right so this probability can be found here as say like this uh, probability of y equal to 1 given x is exponential of x transpose beta divided by 1 plus exponential of x transpose beta i am not going to give you here the details that how i have found find it out but uh, you can assume that it is correct and uh, let us try to indicate this value by here p because probability that y equal to 1 that we have indicated here you can see in the in this case here by here pi right you can see here so that is why i am indicating by it, uh, it by here p so now if you try to see here if you simply try to solve it you will get here p upon 1 minus p is equal to exponential of x transpose beta remember here x, x uh, is here a vector and so i can say here x transpose beta is equal to log of p upon 1 minus p and log is the natural log so now you can identify what is this x transpose beta if you try to recall your expected value of y in the case of multiple linear regression model was expected value of y equal to x beta so now you have somehow found a function which is similar to x beta in the case of multiple linear regression model where y is simply a continuous random variable so this i can uh, define here by uh, by introducing a new term logit so now i can say here y is equal to here logit of p and logit of p is defined here like this one which is here log of natural log of p upon 1 minus p so now if you want to fit uh, such a model what you have to do that you have to obtain the value of beta as beta hat and then you have to substitute uh, it in place of beta to obtain the fitted values so now looking at uh, this expression y is equal to uh, this thing right which is here uh, means here this thing also i can write down here the fitted value as a y i hat is equal to p i hat is equal to exponential of x i transpose beta hat divided by 1 plus exponential of x i transpose beta hat right and this can be written as say 1 upon 1 plus exponential of minus xi transpose beta hat 
So you can see here now the difference. Earlier in the case of multiple linear regression model, your y hat was x beta hat, but now it is changed. Right, it is now here like this. And the next question comes here, how to understand the interpretation of this thing. The interpretation of beta j in the case of multiple linear regression model was that is the rate of change in the average value of y when there is a unit change in the value of x or say xj. To understand this, uh, the interpretation of this beta in the case of logistic regression model, we try to attempt in a different uh, way. First, try to consider a simple case which has only one variable. Right, and suppose if I say here eta x is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x, right. There is only one variable, so something like a simple linear regression model beta 0 plus beta 1 x plus epsilon, right. Now we obtain the value of beta 0 and beta 1 as say this here beta 0 hat and, and here beta 1 hat. Now the fitted value of this eta at x equal to xi is obtained just by substituting x equal to xi in the eta x function like a eta hat xi is equal to beta 0 hat plus beta 1 hat xi. And uh, this is the log odds at x equal to xi, this is how we call it. Because if you try to see here, this is here the log of p upon 1 minus p and p upon 1 minus p is called actually here let's say odds. Those who are familiar with the probability theory, they, they will know it. Otherwise, it is a very simple definition. So, this is log of p upon 1 minus p is called as log of odds. Now, you try to do the same exercise at x equal to xi plus 1. So, obtain the fitted value of eta at uh, this xi plus 1 as eta hat xi plus 1 will be equal to beta 0 hat plus beta 1 hat into xi plus 1, which is the log odds at x equal to xi plus 1, right. Log odds mean log of, see here, base e p upon 1 minus p. This is log odds. So now if you try to take the difference of eta hat computed at xi plus 1 and xi, this will come out to be here like this. Odds at xi plus 1 mean the natural log of odds at xi plus 1 minus natural log of odds at xi. This will come out to be here natural log of the odds of xi plus 1 divided by odds of xi. And if you try to see here, if you try to transform it, then uh, this here odds of xi plus 1 divided by odds of xi is simply coming out to be here exponential of beta 1 hat. And on the other hand, if you try to look here, if you try to take this uh, difference here, say eta hat xi plus 1 minus eta hat xi, it is equal, equal to here beta 0 hat plus beta 1 hat xi plus 1 minus here beta 0 hat minus beta 1 hat xi. So, you can see here that this beta 0, beta 0 will get cancelled, beta 1 xi will get cancelled, this xi. So, we are getting here as a beta 1 hat. So, this is what I have written here, right. So, now you have obtained uh, this quantity uh, like as here. So, this is terms as the odds ratio which is the estimated increase in the probability of success when the value of exponential variable changes by one unit. So, this is how we try to interpret it. Now, the question is uh, the way you have conducted the test of hypothesis in the case of this multiple linear regression model, the using the t test, etc., etc., but here you cannot use it because the model is now different. So, the test of hypothesis for the parameters in the logistic regression model is based on the asymptotic theory. I am not going into details of this asymptotic theory. Asymptotic theory means, means when the sample size becomes very, very large, right. So, and for the test of hypothesis, we have a very general procedure which is the likelihood ratio test. So, uh, the way we try to do it that uh, the test of hypothesis is actually a large sample test which is based on the 
likelihood ratio test statistics which is called as deviance right and uh, there are certain uh, definitions for example a uh, model with exactly p parameter that uh, effectively fits to the sample data is terms as saturated model and the statistic that compare the log likelihoods of fitted and saturated model is called as model deviance and we use this model deviance to to conduct the test of hypothesis it is defined as uh, like this the model deviance is indicated by this uh, lambda beta which is actually twice of uh, natural log of the uh, likelihood of the saturated model minus twice of natural log of the likelihood of the function at beta equal to beta hat where beta hat is the maximum likelihood estimate of beta and this l is here the likelihood function so in case if you assume that the logistic function is correct the last sample distribution of likelihood ratio test statistics is approximately distributed as chi square with n minus k degrees of freedom when n is large and that's a very standard result in statistics right so that that alpha percent level of significance we can conclude that if your uh, model deviance is smaller than chi square uh, value with n minus k degrees of freedom at alpha level of significance then it indicates that uh, fitted model is adequate and if reverse uh, happens that lambda b is greater than chi square with n minus k degrees of freedom then it indicates that fitted model is not adequate so this is how we try to conduct the test of hypothesis in the uh, this logistic regression model now we i will try to take a simple example and i will try to show you how you can implement it in the r software so i'm trying to use here the data set for from the book statistical analysis and data displays by by Heiberger and Holland, which was published by Springer in 2015. Yeah, this data is available through a package, so that is why I'm trying to use it here. So if I try to use it here for for this thing, I need to install here a package which is HH. This is a capital H, capital S, uh, means capital H two times. Right, so you need to install this package using the command install dot packages. You need to upload it um, uh, it using the command library, and after that, I will use here the data whose name is SPACSHU. It has got hundred thirty eight observations on two variables. Right, and uh, this data I can show you. It it here looks here like this. Well, I will try to show you in the R console also. So which has which has got a variable here temperature in Fahrenheit and then damage which is here only only two values 0 and 1 you can see here some values are 0 some values here are 1 and that's all so this is a good example to fit a uh, logistic regression and yeah this uh, data is about some space shuttle challenger disaster which was related to you know, massa space shuttle which has two booster rocket and each of which has three joints sealed with o-rings a warm o-ring quickly recovers its shape after a compression is removed but a cold one will not so an, an ability of an o-ring to recover its shape can allow a gas leak which may lead to disaster so on january 28 1986 the space shuttle challenger exploded during the launch and the coldest previous launch temperature was 53 degree for Fahrenheit. So the temperature forecast for time of launch of the Challenger on the morning of January 28, 1986 was 31 degrees Fahrenheit. And on the evening of January 27, uh, day earlier, a teleconferencing conference was held among people at Morton Ticol Marshall Space Flight Center and Kennedy Space Center. Uh, there was a substantial discussion about ingenious over whether the flight should be cancelled but there was no statistician was present for any of this discussion well i have taken it from the r software so that is why i just uh, just uh, spoken it right i am not an specialist in the space shuttle but anyway i am more interested in using this data set so this input data set is uh, there in the name of SPACSHU. So if you want to use it, you have to use the command data SPACSHU, that is Space Shuttle, that is the short form of uh, this SP. Uh, space Shuttle is the full name and SPACSHU is the short name. And it has two variables. One is here this temperature, which is 
T E M P and capital F, that means temperature in degree Fahrenheit at the time of launch, and damage was either 0 or 1. So, it takes value 1 if an O ring was damaged and 0 otherwise. So, each of the launch has 6 cases, 1 for each O ring. So, there are a total of 23 into 6, 138 cases, and uh, the O ring for one uh, flight were lost at sea. Well, I am simply going to use the data which will uh, look here like this which has values here 0 and 1. Right, okay. So, if you try to plot this data, this will look like here, you can see here, the observations are centered here, this, 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 and here. So, the, so I can think of our logistic regression model and the logit model under consideration is logit of p is equal to beta 0 plus beta temp into f plus epsilon where p is the probability of damage right so you can see here this da data is concentrated only at two point there is no data here in this graph so now in order to fit a, uh, this logistic regression model we have a command here glm this is actually the generalized linear model right so, this GLM command is used to fit the generalized linear model, but uh, here uh, with the, by choosing the, uh, the option here family is equal to binomial, we can fit here the logistic regression model. So, the expression is here like this GLM all in lower case, then you have to give the formula, then data, then family has to be specified as binomial because you have seen that binomial is more suitable because Y follows a binary random variable. Why is the binary random value which takes value only 0 and 1, two values and the model is equal to true method is equal to glm dot fit and there will be many more commands, but I am going to restrict only to these things. So, formula is an object that how you want to specify your model data, the way you, the way you want to give you data on which the glm has to be fitted and family is a de description of the error distribution and link function to be used in the model, right, the rest you can see in the help but anyway i want to show you here the uh, the application so i try to use here the command here glm uh, damage tilde temp f it is something like y tilde x formula as we use in the case of multiple linear regression model like this data here is spacshu and family here is binomial and whatever is the outcome this i'm trying to store in this this outcome spacshu to dot glm you can give uh, give any name right so that i can analyze it because i will be using it couple of times so if you try to see here this is here the outcome so it is here the glm function what we have given command then i have here coefficients the value of interceptum beta 0 and the value of beta 1 and then you have here uh, degrees of freedom here 137 and uh, then you, you have here the value of null deviance then the residual deviance and the value of AIC. AIC is the Akaike information criteria right because here you cannot use the uh, use here the R square or the coefficient of determination. So, now based on that you can uh, also find out uh, different types of thing. For example, if you use here a command here C O E F or this summary of this outcome, then you can get here these uh, details. For example, estimates that means the beta 0 hat and beta 1 hat for interceptum and temperature. Then their standard error are here, their z value are here, their p value are here. Right. So, now based on this I can see here that the fitted model or the fitted logit model under consideration is logit of p hat is equal to 5.085 this is the value of here beta 0 hat minus 0 0.1156 f which is the value of here beta 1 uh, from here. So, look, let me try to show you these things on the R console and you can see here this is here the the outcome on the R software, right. So, let me try to first do it. Yeah, I already have installed this package on my computer. So, I am not installing it, but definitely I need to uh, upload it and I need to have this data set. So, you can see here 
so yeah if you try to see here s p is c s h u yeah you can see here this is the data set here like this there are 138 observations you can see here right so at any rate this data you can also observe my objective is to first to make here the plot right so if i try to make here the plot so you can see here this will come out here like this all the points are concentrated on the bottom at 0 and at 1 on the top you can see here and after that i try to use here by this glm command and i would like to save it here so that i can find out the summary command also so you can see here let me try to clear the screen so you can see here s p e c s h u dot glm so you can see here this is here the outcome right so this is what you are getting here this is the same outcome which i explained you and if you want to get here the coefficients of uh, this thing where from where you can obtain this model this is here like this right so you can see here this is how you can obtain a logistic regression model also and uh, yeah means uh, you can yeah we have not covered here aic but anyway you can have a look into the books and you can find out about a KIK information criteria as well as Bayesian information criteria that is BIC. Yes, I have given you a brief idea about this concept of uh, model deviance. So, null deviance is the model deviance under H0 and uh, its value here is 66.54. Okay, so now we come to an end to this lecture and you can see here in this uh, lecture we have talked about the generalized linear model and we have taken a very specific case which is the logistic regression this glm command is a is a very generalized uh, command in uh, regression analysis and in linear models and it is used under different types of uh, concepts and we have used it for the sake of fitting logistic regression Yes, I agree. There were some concept which uh, we have not understood it, but uh, definitely they are very popular concepts and which are available in almost all the books on regression analysis in the chapter of logistic regression model. My objective was to give you a fair idea that under what type of situation you can use the logistic regression model and how to obtain them in the R software. So I will stop here, but definitely you don't have to stop. But you have, but you need to take some data set. You can collect some artificial data set and try to execute these commands and try to see how you can interpret it. And believe me, this logistic regression is very useful in real data set because many times you want to take a decision. The decision can be yes or no. You are not interested in the values. In those cases, this is a very popular modeling technique whenever the response variable takes the binary variable, binary outcome. So you try to practice it and I will see you in the next lecture. Till then, goodbye.